Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This is my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, March 25th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. And also if you trade Bitcoin, then I'll do a special bonus analysis at the end. First off, a couple clarifications. Number one, the candle that you see over here will be moving around. That is because the market's still open for a small amount of time. But I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then second, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So ticker symbol number one, TLRY. Very, very big mover today. And this will mean a little bit more to those of you that watch past videos, but if you did, Hopefully you remember me talking about that red line right there as resistance. And you can see right here, price came up to that red line, broke through it, and then just has had a very, very nice day. So for anybody that watched the previous video and bought that breakout, uh, big congratulations to you. That's been a very, very impressive mover. So let's get some new levels here mapped out. So the first key level of support is what I would call the ideal level. When you say, hey, Clay, what make this chart look the absolute strongest going forward? And that would be if the price can stay up here above $2.15. Wow. And as I speak, look at this thing, just going to even new highs. And that's why I like to do these when the market's still open, because like I said, we can capture some of this breakout action uh, live. But anyways, 215 would definitely make the chart look the healthiest, strongest moving forward. With that being said, don't get me wrong. It's not like if the price falls below 215, then that implies the entire chart's destroyed or ruined or anything like that. But yeah, if the price can stay above that level, that would certainly make it be, you know, best case scenario. From the overarching standpoint, just watch that purple line right there. 50 period moving average. Keyword being moving. So as time goes by, that line's gonna move itself higher and higher. And you just wanna see the price stay above there. Perfect example of that. Look at that. Beautiful bounce off it right there. Uh, as far as areas of resistance, this thing's basically in blue sky breakout territory and heading higher and higher as I speak. So overall, can't really you know script out a better end to the week here, final 30 minutes. So yeah, definitely gonna be a lot of people watching this one next week. Next one, CGC, another one of these uh, marijuana stocks that is just booming today. Honestly, I don't know why. I'm, there's some sort of news, I'm sure, but um, from a technical standpoint, I don't really care why. Uh, I just care about what's going on with the price and volume, and these things are getting massive volume and very, very nice price movement. So same general idea here. I'm going to go through this one a little quicker because the same premise hold. Take clay, what make this ch chart like the absolute best moving forward? And that would be if the price can stay there above $6.50. But from the big picture point of view, just watch that purple line there, 50 period moving average. So as that line moves higher and higher, as long as the price stays above there, then the overall trend is still plenty in the bull's favor. And then in terms of areas of resistance, again, looking here, you can see this is the highest this thing has been in a very, very long time. So in some senses, you know, I would just call this a blue sky breakout. And like TLRY, this one, as I speak, is pushing in new highs too. So overall, a lot of momentum in these couple ones. So if you like momentum, you like high volume, and you like the price range down below $10, uh, definitely keep an eye on these first couple stocks here. Next one, NVFY, and this one is clearly different than what we just looked at. Uh, now, still overall strong, big gap up, but this is a little bit of perspective because I understand if you're a day trader, flipper, scalper, and you bought right there and your you know, uh, goal was to buy and sell within 20 minutes, well, then, yeah, from that angle, this doesn't look strong. But overall, there was the big move up, and, yeah, there was this pullback here where things do start to get sketchy because you have to eventually say, okay, is this the start of something even bigger to the downside? Is this thing just going to you know collapse right back to where it started? But we seemingly got our answer. The price has started to go sideways. Now, let me be very clear, and I wish I could say trading was this easy. Just because the price has gone sideways does not mean for sure guaranteed that this pullback is over. My point here is it becomes more plausible at this point and reasonable to think that maybe this pullback is over because at least it's finally starting to go sideways, which makes that key area of support there at $2.85. So that's a pretty basic premise. Strong start. Big pullback, still within a strong context, and now starting to go sideways. So is this the bottom of the pullback, and is this thing getting ready to head back up? Keep an eye on it if you like these sorts of scenarios. Next one here, B-A-C-K, back. And overall, nice pattern here. So let me just get this pattern drawn into play. We'll start with the bottom part of the pattern right there, and let me change that to green to represent the support part of the pattern. And then the resistance part of it right here. And then let me make it all one color and make it may hopefully easier to see. So we have our resistance. We have our support. We have the big explosive move right there. If you golfers out there try to make a little bit more visual, put the golf hole down here. And this was what you know would be known as a bull pennant pattern. So just because something's bullish does not mean that it's for sure going to explode upwards. But it is reasonable to think that if the price can come up to the top part of the pattern and get the break, that that break right there could very well create additional upside buying pressure. So if you like bull pennant patterns, you like stocks down below $5, certainly keep an eye on it. 
Next one here, AMC, and just a brutal day here. Not necessarily because it was red, but because this thing is just pushing down to these lows, continues to break down through levels of support. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. First key update here is just based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. So if this thing does try to curl back upwards, then right there at $4.15 will be the main battleground that you'll wanna watch. Even if the price does push above it, I still wanna get that excited because not that far away, you do have that purple line up there, which you now know is that 50 period moving average. But in this situation, because it's up above the price, instead of being looked at as a support, you would look at that as a resistance. Now, what about levels of next potential support? Oh, wow, I didn't realize. Okay, there we go. So let's actually do this. Let me change this here to the daily time frame meaning each one of these represents and then uh, not a daily. There we go. Hourly will make this a little bit easier. I think. Wow. It's been, there we go. So we are going to go back real far into the charts history. I didn't realize it's been this long, but next key area of support that I'd keep an eye on from an overall standpoint down here at about $3 and 90 cents. And these are from lows that are there we go. Coming from back here in uh, early February. So we are talking about multiple weeks since the price has been down in this territory of the chart. But that's what I meant by, yeah, this thing is looking rough. So I did have to change to the one hour time frame. I mean, each one of these candlesticks represents one hour instead of 30 minutes. But we'll go back to the 30 minute time frame moving forward. Real quick, want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online webinar that I'm offering next week. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then certainly get signed up for the free webinar. If you're watching on YouTube, then there's a link down in the description box you can use to sign up. Or if you're watching at my website, there's an area right there on the webpage you can use to get signed up. So like I said, if you've been enjoying, then certainly get signed up for the free webinar. Next one, PLTR. Overall, uh, not a you know, great day, not a terrible day either, but yeah, still did pull back some more, but I will say that the price is now starting to get to definitely some territory where, you know what, I'm not going to call it a do or die level, but certainly levels that you do certainly want to see hold. And that definitely key level there is at the $24 mark. If you go through the history of things, you can see 24 held strong there and then held strong this afternoon. And if the price falls below there, again, does that wreck the chart? Does that destroy everything? It doesn't, but it starts to put the price down in kind of almost this no man's land of the chart where you don't have the next to next, you know, overall level of support until down around there. But um, again, if it breaks 24, it does not mean everything's destroyed. It just starts to make the chart look a little bit more sketchy. So as of now, though, if the price can hold above 24, then you'd have a set of lows here. You'd have that low right there. If you envision those as stair steps, then looking at things from a bigger picture, you'd still very clearly have stair steps progressing in the upwards direction. So again, that's why I would say $24, a key level of support. And then in terms of areas of resistance, uh, in the very near term, I would keep an eye on that trend line right there. But then from more of an overarching standpoint, just keep a close eye on that pink line up there, which in this situation maps out uh, the, the very famous, well-known 200 period moving average. So like I said, not a great day today, but not terrible. But let's see if the price can stay above 24 next week. Next one here, TSLA Tesla. And very, very rough start to the day. Big gap down, but you got to give credit or credit to. And I think it was basically... Not quite. Okay. Well, this was a key area of support headed into today, right down there at the 166 mark. And I thought that maybe that's where it bounced from this morning, but got very, very close, but technically speaking, did not hit it exactly. So, I mean, did it cl get close enough in my mind? Yes. But again, technically speaking, didn't hit that level uh, exactly. But nonetheless, that's where this 166 mark is coming from as I zoom in here. But there's no doubt about it. After it uh, you know, opened up, very, very nice bounce the rest of the day. Uh, still a lot of work that needs to be done. That first bit of work needs to be getting above that purple line there, which you now know is a 50 period moving average. But even if the price does break above there, uh, I still want to get that excited because not that far away from the 50 period moving average, you have its big brother up there, the 200 period moving average, uh, which you can see right there, didn't hit exactly, but got within the general vicinity before sending the price downwards from that angle. Um, so, but to be fair, Considering where it opened up down here and to where it closed, uh, still a very nice day, but there's still more work that needs to be done. Uh, so we'll see how this one continues to play out and see if this uh, bounce here carries the momentum into early next week. Next one here, ACB. Probably should have put this at the beginning of the watch list because this is another one of those marijuana stocks. Uh, but this one didn't have quite as much volume. But nonetheless, uh, still very nice movement. And it does, it does have a lot of volume, don't get me wrong. But those other ones were just... Uh, you know, even larger than this, but same general idea here. Again, I should have put this so I could have gone through this quicker, but what's the question? First question, well, hey, Clay, what's going to make this look the strongest moving forward? That would be that 435 mark. Then you hopefully, if you remember right, what am I going to talk about next? Hopefully you're saying, well, you're going to talk about that 50 period moving average. Exactly. 
because as long as the price stays above that very nice upward trending uh, you know, line right now, then that by definition means the price from an overall standpoint is also trending upwards by building those higher lows. Now, as far as areas of resistance are concerned, this one is not quite as clear as the other ones because those other ones, remember, I mean, they're just flat out completely had already broken out. This one is still struggling right here at this area of resistance. So yeah, technically speaking, it's a little bit above it, uh, but what I consider this just a full blown obvious breakout, I would not. So that's really the big question mark moving into next week is can the price actually get it? See, and as I speak, you know, it might even drop back below that red line. Uh, but like I said, that'll be the big question is, is this the start of a bigger breakout? Is it not? Uh, but all in all, good volume, good momentum. So let's see if the marijuana hype continues into next week. Next one here, S-O-U-N. And just uh, the, the downwards pressure continues. This all started yesterday. I had been talking about this sideways channel here uh, with that resistance and support there. But you can see the price broke down below it right there. Came down, that opened up the gates of momentum. Now that uh, pink line did do a good job of holding strong there, but you can see right there broke below it, which then triggered even a gap down this morning. So yes, the bears have shown up uh, in a big way here and uh, we'll just start fresh here and map out a couple of near term levels. So the first key level from a resistance standpoint, that I think a lot of people will be watching. And what that does make this interesting, because you can see the price is basically knocking on the door of that resistance tread line right there. As I've said with the other ones, if the price breaks above it, that is certainly a step in the right direction from the bullish standpoint. But there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. That first bit of work would then be needing to not only get back up to that 200 period moving average, but breaking up above it. Uh, but from just a trading standpoint, yeah, but that could be an interesting trade. If, if you're just looking to scalp some sort of move, you know, a break there, and then if you can get it to run up there, uh, that could be enough distance, you know, depending on your strategy, of course, to potentially scalp out some profit. In terms of supports, nothing fancy here logic-wise other than a uh, asking the question, where did the, the bleeding finally stop today? And the bleeding finally stopped right down there at 583. So for that reason uh, is what I would consider the area of support. But yeah, no doubt about it. Very rough past couple of days. Next one here, TQQQ. It's an ETF that measures the NASDAQ market. So if you believe the NASDAQ market as a whole is going to go up, this one will also go up. And yeah, overall, a pretty neutral day for the NASDAQ. Uh, bounced up a little bit and then pulled back a little bit. But from an overarching standpoint, I mean... The key levels that I talked about still pertain, especially that 6180, talked about that yesterday. And yeah, it didn't hit it exactly, but right there, the power of charts. Did a good job of com coming down there, finding support, and then getting a bounce. So I'll turn that into a quick plug. Go get signed up for that free webinar because uh, charts really are a great tool to, to understand and, and use within your trading. So 6180 remains at level of support. And then just, and then of course, up there at 6395, that main area of res resistance, although now that we have more data, it does really seem as though a new lo little level right there popped up at 6320. I'll make that look a little bit different. So add in a little dash line there. Uh, so keep an eye on that in the near term. And then just from an overall uh, pattern perspective, I'm going to draw this pretty crudely. But you have a big old bull pennant that's formed over the past few days. So if you want to look at it from that angle, that works too. So overall, um, you know, by no means an explosive end of the week, but overall, all things considered, good solid week for sure. So that wraps up the top 10 stocks. I'll get to the Bitcoin chart here in just a second. But for you stock traders out there, definitely go get signed up for that free webinar next week. It'll be Thursday, March 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. Now let's talk some Bitcoin. One quick clarification. We are no longer talking about the 30-minute time frame, we are looking at the four-hour time frame because Bitcoin is open 24-7, as I'm sure you're aware. So I want this to be relevant for as long as possible over the weekend. But really, nothing has changed from yesterday's video. Uh, if you did watch yesterday's video, then you know that I talked about that perp line there, the 50-period moving average, that pink line there, the 200-period moving average. And it was just a big question, who's ultimately going to win out? And we still don't have the answer. The price came back down here, and like you would want to see it behave, held very nicely above that uh, you know, 200-period moving average. But if I just kind of extrapolate this out a little bit and do this, you can see that as we move further into time, space is running out. So eventually we're going to get the question answered over the weekend. Who is ultimately going to win this battle? Are the bulls going to win with the break to the upside? Something like that. Or are the bears going to win with some sort of break to the downside? That's grab your popcorn. That's what everybody's wondering. That's really the only thing that can be said right now. Uh, the price is, as you saw, it's trapped between these two levels, but space is running out. So somebody's going to win. Something's got to give. Which direction does it give? Well, then, you know, that, that'll that be what everybody's eating their popcorn and Sour Patch Kids and waiting to see what happens. So Bitcoin, pretty straightforward is that. Watch a 50 period moving average. Watch a 200 period moving average. And let's see who wins this current battle. 
And as I just did for the stock traders, I am inviting you as a Bitcoin and crypto trader, definitely get signed up for the class because it'll it is completely relevant to you and you know charts are a great tool to use within your trading. So get signed up, like I said, Thursday next week, March 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy these, hit that like one, leave a comment down below. Do you appreciate me doing Bitcoin at the end? Like I said, any feedback is certainly welcome. So hit that like button, leave a comment down below, go get signed up for that free webinar. Have a great weekend.